Hello and welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. Yes. Uh, the presidential debate happened yesterday uh. and uh, uh, Biden just kept looking to the left. Apparently he naturally looks to the left. And they, they reckon if they put him on the right, he would not look like he was looking into mid, mid space. Oh dear. Oh, we're, on the end, we're, we're at the end of civilization, guys. This is a review of A Quiet Place Day One. Day a new one. film in the Quiet Place franchise. Whoop whoop. Are we fans? We are. We like the first. I loved the first. And I wasn't as sure in the second. No. I can't remember what I said in the uh, no. view for it. There's quite a few times where I've said I don't like something and then in, re in the reviews on the channel, I've back. said that I liked it then. Um, yeah, at least you're not like now where you say it was bad and then it's your best. So on reflection, yes. uh, the second one, yeah, was is the weakest link. I think so, because there's always the feeling with the second one that you've had the horror of the first, you've had the newness of the thing. We had Killian Murphy. We had Killian Murphy in it. We didn't have John Krasinski, who's, who's a very sort of like, you know, and they had that whole kind of, oh, is dad going to die in the first one? Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, That was so traumatic. Uh, so yeah, I felt like A Quiet Place 2 kind of did that thing that for me, curious comparison, Inside Out 2 is done, which is the same thing again. Which is It's still good, it was still good. Yeah. It's just it's just in comparison to Exactly. I love doing this. This is the threequel, but it's a prequel. Get me? Yeah. It's yeah. the third, but it's set before the the events of the first uh, quiet place. I was tell you what I was getting as we were going into a this session. Fucking magpie. It's a fucking magpie. I mean just one second. <laughs> Yeah, I always keep saying it sounds like a velociraptor, like the dinosaur. Maybe it's a giant robin. Okay, sorry about that. We've got our own kind of monsters here. I was getting going into this kind of uh, Cloverfield vibes, because... Yes. Do you know what I mean? There was Cloverfield and then there was Cloverfield Lane. Mm. And I preferred Cloverfield Lane to Cloverfield. Yeah. And yeah. they did them back to front. I'm curious the way they make films back to front. You know they do that. It's odd. Okay, this is directed by Michael Sarnowski. I was boring Maddie to death about him when we went in. Very exciting, because he made The Pig. Uh, with Nick Cage, and I think that is notable because it's an incredibly stylish, beautifully made, really layered, really, just really moody. It was moody yeah. and it was, he's got a good filmic sense. So I was kind of really intrigued to see how he had managed this. I also knew it, uh, that I had, you know, high hopes for it because of the cast. You can't really go wrong with Lupita. Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o, she's a cracking actress. She's really subtle. She's yeah, really nuanced. She, she does, she she plays fear so well, oh, you know. She she's plays a good fear. horror lead. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. She, she plays gets that fear in her eyes like, so spot on. And she manages to do that thing, baked into her face is vulnerability and mm. strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got that. Also in here is Joseph Quinn. Yes, who we love, who I love. Well, I love him too. <laughs> well, I love him just as much. Uh, he no, but I like things. really love him as a person. He's yeah. really lovely. And Matty was sharing with me some really fucking annoying stories about people being horrible to him. Yeah, after Stranger Things. Which made me want to go and tear their Stranger Things He's a really good off. actor and I can't get over how much. So I remember when we were watching Stranger Things, we were all convinced like, oh my God, is he like Rob Downey Jr.'s son or something? Yeah. Um, it's uncanny. He literally looks like young Robert Downey Jr. Uncanny. Uh, it also stars Alex Wolf. Um, I love Alex Wolf. Another great horror. I, I was he the one in Hereditary? Yeah. Oh my god. And Jumanji. Anyway, so a cracking cast. It's short. It's 95 minutes. It's a prequel. I like the Perfect trailer. length, actually. Perfect length. But all this short stuff, it's just everything's too long now. Exactly. I'll, I'll quote him every time. Hitchcock says a film should be as long as you can not go to the toilet the size of your bladder. Well, um, you go to the toilet every five Which minutes. means I can only make short. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a whole different bunch of characters. It's parked before the, the original Quiet Places. And so it's kind of like, it's, it's blank canvas and we're starting from scratch. And, we're, and we are kind of given tonally, we're introduced to, this film tonally is really not what you think it might be. Yeah. And that's set up from the beginning because we are introduced, I thought in a darkly hysterical scene yeah. in a hospice. And that opening scene I thought was fantastic where we had Alex Wolf as the kind of carer yeah. in this hospice and Lupita Nyong'o is one of many um, patients. patients who has a terminal illness, she's dying of cancer. Um, and she reads a poem, doesn't she? She's written a poem yeah. about everyone in there. Oh, it's just shit. Yeah. shit it's very, shit. it's very funny. Um, but I think as soon as you go into this film, it, it kind of wrong foots you. you. You're in it and it's, it's tonally, it's, how do you, it's not that it's depressing, but it's poignant. No, yeah, it's weird. I wouldn't describe it as depressing, although it no. is all very depressing stuff. Yeah. They do it in a way that isn't, um, it's weird because I, I, I was upset in a lot of parts of the film and I cried mm. quite a bit 
but it didn't leave me feeling like heavy and depressed like no. some stuff can. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing blind. Sorry, the sun, the sun, <laughs> the sun has come out. The sun has got his hat on as, as Nadia. If Nadia was oh my goodness. Oh, we might have to move you. It's hard to talk about how this film achieves what it achieves without kind of jumping almost to the end. So in a sense, the main protagonist is, is Lupita Nyong'o. They go on a sort of uh, an outing into Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, Alex Wolf kind of says, right, we're going to go and do this thing. And we'll get pizza. We'll get pizza. But he's kind of not been honest because they go and see a kind of a marionette show. Uh, Which I loved. I loved that little... Does that very, a marionette show? I kind of, for the, the very, very, very first part of the film, kind of forgot what film I was watching. I was like, yeah. so invested in what yeah. was... But the, the little puppet show was really... Oh my God, it's right down to the fact that he had a marionette and he felt like a real marionette. He was so, maybe he is. He's, I think he is. He looked like Geppetto. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He kind of walked he did, in, he, did. he had a tube in his mouth. And so you've got this wooden kind of puppet and then it blows a balloon fucking up. It was so magical. It took me back to when we'd always go to the puppet. The little angel theatre. Yeah. Yeah, so there was a magic charm to the storytelling in this, which really, if you see the pig with Nick Cage, is not surprising. So, yeah. so that first scene for me really made me think, oh, we've got something very different here. Mm. We, because the thing about A Quiet Place is, the whole kind of concept of the horror is about jump scares or jump sounds yeah, yes. against a tapestry of silence. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and I was saying to Maddie as we came out, this film really of all three has the toughest job of all. Because there's nothing surprising about the concept. No one's going to go and see this and not know that the idea is it's quiet. You mustn't say anything. Yeah, and what You've the aliens look like. We know what they look like, exactly. Uh, and we know how kind of almost uh, unkillable they are. And again, this franchise is one of the few things that it's still scary when you see the, what, the monster, you know, because I usually get so annoyed when yeah. once you see it, because you're like, all the suspense is the bit that's, you know, yes. scary, which the first film was able to do because it was the first one. Yeah. But this, it just, they still managed to scare the shit out absolutely, of me. Three absolutely. Three films in. Uh, and so, you know, right at the beginning, and if you think this is a really short film, it's economically told, you, and yet it feels like they managed to do that thing, which is incredibly scary for filmmaking where it's short, it's punchy, and yet at the same time there are moments in there where there is great reflection, characterization, mm -hmm. moments of kind of contemplation. And I think what they did that was really clever, by making our main character uh, terminal, uh, you kind of, it kind of almost also, they also removed a fear element really yeah. around her dying because it wasn't just about her dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that in itself was really meaningful. It just added a really No, it was really layer. clever to do that. Yeah. Because I didn't know that at all going into no. it from the trailer or anything, so. No. Now, you, you, quite quickly you realise that the cat, this is a film in which a cat is the main character. <laughs> Fucking hell. Did you see Paramount posted loads of clips of all the cats going to the premiere last night? It's so Disney. sweet. Yeah, oh just so God. many cats. I love to the cat. This made me a cat person. Yeah, I, I'm, I, look, I love all animals and I'm an animal lover. And I do love cats still, but I've always been more of a dog person. But this film really made me love cats. Oh my God. Because I realise that you never really get like a cat companion in these films. It's no. always like a dog and they always no. die. Um, but it was, it was but really we, nice to have a cat. It was really nice. And of course, you know, there were so many moments in this film because what happens is she's out on a day out and, and, and the aliens land. It all kicks off. It, you know, New York goes fucking batshit crazy. Yeah. They start landing it. Oh, we really liked that fact at the beginning, wasn't it? About New York City oh, the yes. same. Oh, yes. It's 90, yeah, the, the yeah, resting 90. sound of New York City is 90 decibels, which is it's the same. It's the same sound as a constant scream. The same as a constant scream. Same as a constant scream. Now, this film also does that wonderful thing in the first real first part first 15 minutes where and i'm not going to say who we lose a character i wasn't expecting to lose mm. i love it i don't love i didn't like it no yes you were in tears you cried a lot i did it was really sad so did I. I cried a lot too but i was hiding it it's a good film i cry a lot though but... but anyway so there was a moment at the beginning where you've had these kind of false starts and you've been introduced to the monster and we've been introduced actually which i really liked because as Mandy just said the monster isn't a surprise but what we've seen is it do different things. When it's, there was a moment where we see one of the monsters sniffing something and little partitions come out of its head. Yeah, because they don't have faces, and eyes or anything. They just it's have weird... Sort of sensors, sensory pressures. Things. It's like they've got QB bits kind of coming and out And they have their ear holes that go... Yeah. What's the name of the actor again from Stranger Things? Just said, just said his name. Just said from name. Stranger Things. I, I kind of was thinking Joseph Quinn must have sort of like history. It's, they're not too dissimilar to the Demigorgons. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> he knew what was going on. Um, um, now, this film was, there were no surprises with Lupita Nyong'o. She is moving through, so th this catastrophe happens. We've had deaths that we haven't expected. We see a moment of, how would you describe it? Total brutality by one of the other kind of cast members, mm. which is needed to protect everyone. Yeah. Because we both got really intolerant of gibbering fools screaming and crying. Yeah, man, like, like you know quick. you've got to be quiet. Why are you, Why are you like this? <laughs> 
So the woman ends. Well, I get, I understand panic attack and <laughs> high fencing, but this guy was just like, oh. help us, we're gonna die. Yeah, I and everyone's like, shut, shut up. Shut the fuck up, mate. When you know the deal is that any noise is gonna get us all killed, you shut your mouth. Or if you don't, this chap's gonna break your neck. It was hardcore. That, that was really it's hardcore. A bit rough, that scene. It was rough. Um, and so, and so, but then quite quickly, we're kind of given a mission statement, which is really neat. Everyone's basically trying to escape Manhattan. Everyone's just been there. Everyone's heading down to the South Ferry, aren't they, to get mm. off the Manhattan Island, except for <laughs> Lupita Nyong'o, who he wants pizza. Yes, because Alex Wolf said he was going to get a pizza, but he lied. Lied. Well, he kind of was judicious with the truth and said, "No, we're going back." But no. So she kind of, in whatever way, ends up on her own with her cat heading to Harlem for pizza. Now, the reason I'm, I really wanted to flag that up, I think life is no more complicated than just going for pizza. And I think that's what this film is about. No, I really about. liked that whole oh, thing that her objective was pizza. Well, yes, because... Her character objective is pizza. But you know, your mum speaks about this a lot. When you're on your deathbed, and let's face it, really, for this whole film, Lupita Nyong'o's character is on her deathbed. Mm -hmm. We know people who are struggling, and I'm being serious for a minute, you know, struggling and striving through terminal diagnoses. And your mum always says, one of the most powerful things your mum's always said is that when you're on your deathbed, no one's gonna to come to you on your deathbed with a, with a flip chart and go, right, on your CV, you did this, and you, yeah, you yeah. did what, and over. No, on your deathbed, you're gonna be the summation of your relationships. You're gonna, it's gonna be the love and the connections that you have with people. Um, I think this might be quite a challenging film for your mum to watch, given where she's at with some of her, her friendships. Um, and I just thought there was something beautifully romantic because, of course, yes, it's not just the pizza because what the pizza kind of denotes for her is her father. Yeah, uh, who passed away who passed, the same thing. Yeah, exactly. And he was a musician and he was in Harlem and it was time that they spent together. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it was a really... I mean, in a weird way, the pizza in this film is like the pig in Nick Cage's film. It's The director's interested in idiosyncratic or odd kind of... Um, destination points or mm. things that we fix on right, yeah. and what those things mean yeah. for us and how they complete us and I, I think to find that in a mainstream horror film mm. is quite interesting that no, they let him do it yeah 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 and I found that really magical and it just made and I think I think it was a real tribute to Lupita Nyong'o and the direction and again because it's a quiet place these films these films are driven by very little script yeah. I mean, you made an interesting point, having been to acting college. There's a lot of clowning in this mm. skills. No, yeah, there was uh, there was like a specific scene in this where, because um, I, I just studied at Mountview for six months and one of the classes that we do was clowning. And it, you know, before doing it, I was like, what the fuck, what I don't want to walk around like a clown. Um, but it was a really interesting lesson in just how, how you portray all your character's emotions and objectives and everything through just yeah. expression. Yeah. There was one specific scene which was just like an exercise that we did in clowning when, um, you know, she's walking and wanting to journey on her own and um, she's being followed, you know, oh, by, by Joseph Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she keeps turning around because they can't speak, you know, she's trying to tell him to fuck off and do his own thing and he's not, he just keeps following her and I, I really liked it. It was, it was beautiful. It reminded me of those lessons. But there were a couple of moments like that. If you think back to the marionette scene, that yeah. was all about physical performance and yeah, physical yeah, theatre. Yeah. Many of the actors in this are all performing physically, mm. but not verbally. You then also had much later in the film when, you know, they're potentially in Harlem. Um, you know, there's the, the magic trick scene, which yeah. again was quite, I was getting Joker vibes. You know that scene in the, yeah, in the, in yeah. the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that it was, was quite cool. magical and beautifully choreographed. It was. Their chemistry. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a romantic sense, because no. that's what I liked as well, that they were just... I'm getting emotional remembering them. their chemistry. I know, their chemistry on screen was incredible, honestly. Yes totally believed it. it was just yeah. that's some of the best chemistry i've seen on screen in a while i'm so pleased you say that because i think what happens i think with film critics and film reviewers and film lovers is and even people who think they like films they go oh but that's a quiet place it's part of that front they wouldn't yeah. think to look yeah, to yeah, it yeah. for possibly i would say some of the best acting i think i've seen you know honestly this year it was the intensity really of both of them because you can have two incredible actors and they just not yes. work together but these two literally absolutely really sensational like, I, I really like the point that you, you re reiterated the point too there is no romantic interest here this is only connect this is connection companionship yeah. he admits to and i like this too he admits to from a masculine position his how scared he is mm. he wants to stay with her she gets something from him she didn't expect. Yeah. He gets something from her. Because before she's quite, like at the start of the film especially, you know, she's very um, oh, understandably, on, yeah, yeah well, cold yeah, and, 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 and not kind of willing to form deep connections with anyone no. other than her cat. No, exactly. Um, so 
it was it's really nice to character. see her change and kind of warm mm. to him and mm. let somebody in really. Let somebody in. But my favourite scene is the one that really made me cry when they um, managed to get to her place for her to you know, get her meds and mm. whatever. And there's like a thunderstorm going on outside. And that's a cool detail as well um, in the franchise, because I remember it in the second film, that if you're near like running water, so it was in the first film, they go to a waterfall and they scream. But if there's like strange. constant, if you're like near running water and it's like a constant sound and you're near it and you speak and you make noise, it doesn't get yeah. heard by them. Because it's the idea that against too, the noise, it creates yeah, yeah, a yeah, white noise. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, there's a scene where he reads one of her poems about her mm. dying mm. and um, then every time the thunder, make, like the lightning strikes and then the thunder makes a noise, the two of them just like scream and like let out all of their mm. shit. And it was like so powerful. It was so powerful. So I was powerful. Into, it, it was genuinely like emotional. Genuinely really. And that's where I think these films are so good. Yes, this is part of the Quiet Place franchise. Yes, you can look into what the monsters are after, oh, they can't deal with water. You've got little kind of details that are given to you that sort of slot into the whole franchise. Of, oh, okay, that's their vulnerability. Could that be where we kind of go to next? But really, what are these films about? These films are always about something else. And I thought this film was a really important film and a brilliant director to kind of look after something like this about where the, our priorities should lie yeah. and where our connect and, and, and how our connections that we make with the least likely of people, he's a financial lawyer or, you know, they're different generations, completely different walks of life. Connections can be found, mm -hmm. connections can be made. Uh, and companionship in the form of, you're right, it was really nice. It was really weird. It was really nice to see a, a cat yeah. given full characterization. Yeah, yeah. The cat was such a good actor as well. Like, yeah. And, but also, at the end, when like, Joseph Quinn's reading a letter, I don't know if you saw it, but the cat's literally reading the letter as well. Oh like, the cat was so cute. And there's one point, cat. the funniest thing about cats, though, and cat lovers of the channel, you'll, you'll agree with this. There's one moment where they're in the most <laughs> ludicrously dangerous scenario. They find That's themselves the in a worst. nest. Yeah, eggs. These are eggs, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, were they eggs because they were, were eating they them? Were, I, don't I don't know, know what, what they anyway, were. Anyway, there was a really place where there were a shitload of them and they were all having a bit of a barney. Yeah. The cat, they cut to a cat and the cat's just sat on an iron girder and it kind of does this thing which the cats one do. one literally walks under it and he's kind of... <laughs> it could be a ball of fucking string. Well, I loved the little bit as well when there's like a, a very short amount of time where she loses the cat. Mm. Um, and you know you kind of just assume the cat's dead. Mm. I was paranoid the entire time yeah, about the did. cat dying because yeah. you, whenever there's an animal in fucking horror films, they die, and it really annoys me. Yeah, it's really sad. Um, but and you think you know, well, it's either gone or we're going to cut to it. It's going to be stressed out mm. like by itself. And it cuts to it, and he's just like, well, everybody else is dying or you know traumatized and trying to be quiet. He's just chasing a little mouse, and like it's just so, I loved yes, all the bits yes. of the cat. The cat kind of was the only thing that calmed me down throughout the film because like, something awful would happen and he would just like plod along like nothing mm. had just, mm. like nothing had happened. And um, so the stressful scene was the water one. When oh in the God, tube. down into the subway. So there, it's great. There are some wonderful set pieces. It, it, it makes great use of that device of you can't make any noises. And when you do make noises, fucking hell, you all know about it and hear about it pretty sharpish. It, but it was what I was surprised by and what I loved about this film was it was a poetic film as yeah, much as it she was, was a poet. and she was a poet absolutely and it and it made really I thought refreshing choices stylistically visually the color palette was great the soundtrack was really the good the soundtrack and there was a song in it that was really similar it was just like to the track that we're using at the moment it's amazing <laughs> but the, but you know and, and I thought you know obviously they've had to CGI the devastation of New York but I thought the CGI meshed with reality worked really well it, oh, yeah, it, it did reminded did. me of the last of us yeah 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 that kind of dystopian they, look yeah look. and how they blended it I thought that was really good yeah they did that really good. and I have to say well, why don't we pros let's t let's look towards how it ended in our summary because I think you can probably tell we really like this film. So why don't you summarise and score it? <sighs> um, I was really excited about this film just because cast-wise, mm. I was like, it's almost going to be a guaranteed good watch. Um, yeah. I almost always trust whatever she's in. Yeah. Um, I love both the other films as well. When I say the second one, I don't mean I didn't like it. It no. was just out of the three i would say the weakest but this film like could honestly stand on its own like if mm. what's stopping you is the idea that it's part of that franchise it's a horror film please like ignore that and just watch it as a film on its own because yeah it stands alone doesn't and it? and you really like, can because it's actually made as a yeah, people so you don't need way. to have actually yeah. watched yeah. actually encourage people to, if you've not seen the others to not watch them and just yeah. watch this first yeah. um yeah. the performance is honestly immaculate the chemistry on screen was insane it bothers me that a film like that, they won't probably get the same recognition. For the acting, the acting. Yeah. This is the best 
I thought that at the point, both with Alex Wolf and with uh, Joseph Quinn, yeah. she, these, this was some really collaborative, deep, mm. deep acting work going yeah, on. Yeah. It was really authentic. Yeah. So much better than something that, you know, will often, like you say, get accolades for, oh, it's a long shot of someone going through everything in a single, what the fuck all that shit? Yeah. This is an artificially created thing, but they are real. Mm. And the emotions were real. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I just believed everything that happened in it. Mm. Right down to the CGI, which I'm usually not big on, like I didn't feel it when I was watching it. Um, I thought the soundtrack was amazing. <laughs> Funnily enough, it's probably the loudest out of the three films, because I seem to remember the first film not having much soundtrack to mm. it, so it was literally just like silent all the time. This one probably has the most dialogue, most mm. um, music, uh, just their use of music as well, including the end scene, which I won't spoil, but the, the very end of the film is crazy. This is the, first horror film in a really long time where it genuinely didn't lose itself towards the end for me no. and I think that was helped by the fact that it was like a perfect length it was not even films I've really loved recently have been like yeah it was great my only thing is too long dragged mm. out lost itself a bit there but like this was genuinely a film that for me was perfect from start to finish mm. which I haven't felt in a really long time um it moved me there were there were lighter moments as well that were a bit funnier and um Made me jump out my skin numerous times, including you, you're proper jumping out. I've got that dream sequence. Why do dream sequences yeah, always, yeah, get yeah. always get me? They always get me. Because you think you're all right. Yeah. They usually start off fine. And then I've it's... got to always think to myself, if I'm making something, I won't do a dream sequence. Part of me's going, maybe I should. You're really... fucking scared the shit yeah. out of me. No, so it did everything. And it had a cat. It had an animal companion in it, which mm. I'm always a softy for. Um, I would genuinely see this film many, many more times. And I would recommend it to anyone, even if you're not necessarily a horror movie watcher. It's a film to watch for the for the acting generally, mm -hmm. um, and we also loved the colour grading mm -hmm. on it as well. It had a really nice look to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I genuinely this can be high score. I'm giving it a hundred out of hundred. Whoa! She gives it a popcorn junkie's hundred out of hundred. That's a fresh. Yeah. To pop popcorn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I totally agree. I agree with absolutely everything you said. Um, I think the great thing about this film, for anyone who thinks they don't like horror films, yes, there are jump scares, yes, there are moments where it's a bit, it's not actually gory, it's not that gory, um, but uh, this is much more than a horror film. This is, this is a film about people, it's about connections, it's about relationships. It doesn't fall into the trap of, say, something like The Walking Dead, which just becomes a bit kind of boring and repet yeah. repetitious of walking around and crowds of people and avoiding other crowds. And, you know, Civil War even, you know, recently had that, got a bit kind of grindy. This is a deeply personal, deeply emotional, deeply thought-provoking and surprising vignette of a film where Lupita Nyong'o completely holds this and mm. controls it. And she's beautifully supported mm. by Joseph Quinn and, yeah. and Alex Wolfe uh, in equal measure. Really, really kind, generous, tender performances uh, from all of them. A, a wondrous cat in there. It looked great. It was nice having two really kind, genuine men yes. as well. <laughs> yeah, and there was no untoward stuff no, that you had to they contend were, they with. They were just nice. Yeah, they were just men. nice guys, which was nice. And in fact, she was the kind of spikier of it, all. Yeah, yeah. And we've already said this great thread of her already being terminal makes you think about us all being terminal. I mean, when, when you get to the end and there's this idea of possibly someone being able to kind of survive, you think, well, what are you surviving for? Yeah. You know, what is death? At what point would I like death to come in this set of mm -hmm. circumstances? Without giving away the final, final shot, the final shot is sensational. Yeah, that sensational. is class direction. Mm. Right down to just the, the, the speed of it. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was brilliant. The final shot in this is brilliant. brilliant. So like you said, the last time I had that really kind of same special feeling was talk to me. That, that, yeah. that end of that film was good. Yeah, it You is, have to it see is. this. No, you have to. Yeah, and if you avoid all the adverts, you're literally in and out in 90 minutes. No, Go it's like on a big so street. quick. Like, I felt like I'd just sat down. Yeah. Because, I, I, you know, I was watching it, I was so invested, and then I was like, why does this feel like it's wrapping up? It literally yeah. just started. <laughs> it was a, it's an absolute treat, it's a real perfect. treat. What are you rating it? Oh, 100 out of 100. Really? It's up there. Oh, that's it's full on. 200 from the popcorn. Fresh popcorn. I, it's my favourite of the three. It's my favourite in the my franchise. My favourite of the three as well. And it's already done well on Thursday night in America. That's good. Looks on like it's doing Thursday well at the box office.